Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, sure enough, I did say I was a little bit nervous and I thought there was going to be a bit of a crash and literally, I think it was within about an hour or two of posting that video, we had a crash and yeah, what a crash it was. Now, it did come a little bit earlier than expected, but also it didn't drop as far as what I thought it could. Now look, I'm a bit of a pessimist uh, at the best, of, not so much a pessimist, but I'm always very very cautious of things but I have noticed that I think I am too bearish at times uh, and not bullish enough at times as well but that's me I'm always somewhat of a little bit of a skeptic about things never complete pessimism or anything like that but definitely sort of yeah I'm thinking we're going to go a lot lower than we are and anyway we'll move into that and have a look at the charts and I'll explain myself but let's just have a look at what we have on CoinGecko here at the moment. So I'm in 3.4%. It ended up being like, I think it was $300 billion or something was wiped off very, very quickly. I mean, Bitcoin was up around 60, I think it was 62,000, 64,000, something like that, and wicked all the way down to basically 52,000. So I mean, that was, you know, $10,000 dip right there. Now it has already started to recover as we can see, and so have a lot of other coins, but... Doge was not even affected, just basically sort of held. So yeah, it's unbelievable. I just, I'm too nervous and too scared to get into Doge at the moment. It's such a high price compared to where it was, and it just doesn't really have fundamentals behind it. And look, that's what worries me. Could I use it as some kind of swing trade? Yep. And, and you know, like I might throw, you know, a couple hundred bucks or a thousand bucks at it or something on a big dip uh, and then to try and, you know, get some swing trade. But I just, I don't see it as a long term hold. So I don't really want to touch it at this price. Look, again, when it was much, much lower, I was happy to put some money into it and I doubled my money twice on Doge. But, you know, I could have done a whole lot better. But that's hindsight. No one's ever going to get it right. You know, there's going to be some people that are just riding Doge all the way to the top. And there's going to be others that aren't. But then there's going to be people that are in Dogecoin and riding it all the way to the top, sort of. But they aren't in the other coins that have done extremely well. So that's just the way it is. Well, I've missed out on some of this Dogecoin. I haven't missed out on it at all. Like I said, I doubled my money twice. You know, and it's always that same old thing. If I only I had to put in more. But, you know, I literally put a couple of hundred bucks into it. But then doubled my money, got it back. And then later on, I saw a dip and I put some more money into it and doubled my money again. But since then, I haven't been in it for a long time. And it's done like much bigger gains since then. What can you do? All right, moving on. BTC dominance. It's literally staying under 50% now. So, uh, yeah, things are going to heat right up, I think. You know, we're really going to start to see some crazy stuff. Uh, ETH dominance risen just a little bit, was down in the 11s, now it's up to 12% and gas just still hovering around that kind of $100 mark. Now we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag, there's still some things that are down over 24 hours uh, and other things uh, not so much and some things weren't even affected at all really, Bitcoin cash, I mean... Yeah, of all things, still hanging in there. Litecoin uh, definitely had a dip. But look, over the last seven days, a lot of things are generally still up. Not Bitcoin, though. All right. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Because a lot of things kind of really dumped in the last 24 hours. All right. Solana, so had a good uh, comeback. Neo, Quantum, uh, KuCoin, uh, VeChain. Now, these 24 hours, because it's kind of... It's missed the dump. Most of these coins did take uh, quite a hit. But look, VeChain just continues to do well. Uh, that is on an absolute tear. And I've uh, sold some and taken some profits. And look, I'm sort of kicking myself now because they went up so much more. The last time I took profits on VeChain, uh, it's 50% up since then or not even, or maybe even more now. I'd have to go back and check. But look, it was still well in profit. So that's the thing that I remind myself is no one ever lost money taking profits. Have I lost unrealized gains? Absolutely. But we saw what could happen or what can happen in the last sort of 24 hours. The same thing could happen to VeChain. It could basically sort of half fall off a cliff tomorrow and lose a whole stack of what it's made. So, 
yeah, it is what it is. And I've still got a really good bag of V-Chain. I've got plenty of it left for should it go even higher. But again, yeah, that's the way it is. You know, you never know when it's at the top or when it's exactly at the bottom. You just take a guess and you don't have to be exactly right. You just got to be thereabouts. And the bulk of my V-Chain position, I literally got V-Chain at around about two cents. Most of it. Some of it I got well under a cent. And it's now 27 cents. So, yeah, again, I'm not I'm not complaining. It's still doing pretty well. And there we can see Dogecoin. I mean, 341%. It's still up in the last seven days. And, you know, probably going to go high. You know, there are people talking about Dogecoin getting to a dollar. And, you know, when this was well under a cent and I was buying it, I just thought there's no chance Dogecoin will ever make it to a dollar. And now, absolutely kicking myself that I didn't hold on to some but again that's that's the way it is no one can get them all all right so we've seen what's pumped what didn't do so well what got hammered raven coin not hammered but got uh, beaten up a little bit chilies again they, they still had such a good pump so that's to be expected synthetics token uh, took a bit of a beating but look what I've noticed about synthetics token is there is some heavy support around 16 17 dollars so even $18 is not too bad a price. Uh, it's had some dips, and look, it got up to, I think it was nearly $21, $22, uh, like only sort of 24 hours ago. Uh, made it down to $16 something, and then it's sitting back around this $18 mark. And look, it's been somewhere around kind of $17 to $19 for quite some time. So for me, it's just really forming a base, and I am starting to think I might have to start getting some more synthetic token, because it will pop. It's just a matter of time. It's you know waiting for it to do it so uh, the graph again coming down it's really been you know sort of trading sideways taking a bit of a hit here but look you can see most things took a big hit in that last 24 hours and then they've started to make some of it back file coin same thing uh, i was lucky i sold some file coin uh, not long before the dip so I made some pretty good profits there and I may have to look at buying back into Filecoin with that money I'm not sure how much uh, extra I'll make but I do like Filecoin and I want to get some more but look these losses you know the worst we can really see is 11% and that's still up 7% for the week though so the losses weren't too bad the gains in the last 24 hours look most of these gains are immediately after the dip that's what happened the dip happened and people just in mass started buying those up so yeah there definitely was a big dip in you know a, a majority of these coins it's not so much dogecoin but then they were bought up very quickly and that's why you're seeing this green people took advantage of that dip all right let's go and have a look at bitcoin so what we can see is that it actually on bitstamp anyway it dipped in down to fifty one thousand dollars and i was saying that you know i thought bitcoin could come down into the 40s and you know maybe even possibly come into the 30s i you know i've said that a few times now and it's just we've seen dips there's definitely been dips i mean we saw this here this was a good sell-off you know we saw this was a good sell-off but there's just too much buying pressure people still want bitcoin tons of people want bitcoin they're just not overly happy to be buying it at 60 sort of three sixty four thousand dollars but geez if it gets down into the mid 50s they are just lapping it up it's that kind of 54 56 thousand dollar mark at the moment really is where all the support is it's you know there's a lot of market manipulation going on that's what uh, a lot of this dip was uh, all these longs got liquidated because i did show that uh you know in a tweet that i did the other day the greed indexing was up at 79 for greed whenever it gets that high you're always not far away from you know a fairly big dip and that's what's happens and now we'll probably go back into uh people feeling quite bearish about things uh and then all of a sudden it'll pop but actually let's go and have a look all right feed and fear and greed index where is it at now after that big dip did it even make any difference <laughs> no it didn't people just bought the dip straight away this was at 79 and now it's still at 74 so maybe there's even more of a correction going to come but in saying that again there's just too much support people still really really want to buy bitcoin and 50 sort of five ish thousand you know 54 56 somewhere between there that's the support so i just i can't see bitcoin going down 
could it go down a little bit more yet but i think it's just going to be bought up like i said someone or you know multiple people managed to push it down to sort of fifty one thousand on bitstamp but it just got snapped up straight away that the candle bodies are still up around the kind of fifty five fifty four thousand dollar mark fifty six thousand dollar mark oh excuse me so I, I, yeah i can't see any really big dips coming i've you know I've, for a long while i've thought we're going to get these you know 30 40 percent corrections and look at some stage they will come there's no doubt about that it's just not yet i i, I think yeah it'd have to be the hundred thousand dollar mark that's where i think you're probably going to see a lot of people take profits thereabouts but even then i don't think they'll be able to push bitcoin down that far i just yeah, I think things really have changed uh, in the markets that we now have that, you know, sort of, you know, mass adoption coming. It's not there yet, but it's definitely starting. And I just think any time you see Bitcoin dips of, you know, 15, 20 percent, they're just going to get snapped up. And that'll be right up to 100,000. I think after 100,000, maybe not so much. You know, I don't think there'll be too many people who will be super keen to buy it at 100,000. At least the big players, probably not. It'll be a lot of retail FOMO and stuff like that after that. But I think any time you see Bitcoin try to dip under 100,000, like maybe 80,000, once it finally gets past 100,000, I think it'll just be yeah, bought up very, very quickly. Uh, you know that's what i'm seeing at the moment now again i have to tell everyone that's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor that's personal opinion only and that's again it's not based on anything other than just my time in the space and my gut feeling and i trust my gut feeling you know was it coincidence that i said you know there's probably going to be a dip coming yesterday and sure enough there was and a pretty good one I don't know, maybe coincidence, or again, maybe it's just I've been around for a while and I do understand the markets at least a little bit. By no means do I consider myself some, you know, messiah or, you know, full blown expert or anything like that, but I do think I have a pretty good feel of what sort of happens considering I've been here since 2017. So we're getting close to four years now I've been in the market. Now, again, I've told my story, I've got a little bit disillusioned in 2018. And a little bit in 2019 because you know it was kind of moving all over the place but definitely sort of late 2019 into sort of 2020 and that i did get back into it i was following it a lot more uh, and yeah I, I think i've learned a lot from that bear market i think i've learned more from that bear market than i did anything and i've learned more from that crash from uh, xrp earlier this year than anything because you know i I bought up to 50, at, at 50, I think 54 cents was the highest that I bought um, XRP. The lowest I bought, I think, was about sort of 20 cents, 21 cents. I ended up selling most of it at 19 cents, so quite a loss. And really, all I had to do was hold. And I mean, it's right back where. Let's go have a look now. Where is XRP? $1.44. And on the highest I bought it was 54 cents. I could have still been well in profit. But, you know, you live and you learn. Again, look, the money, even though I sold XRP at a loss, the money that I took from it and put into other coins has well outperformed uh, those kind of gains anyway. So, yeah, I still learn a lesson from it and I'm constantly learning lessons. And that's why I bring these videos to hopefully provide you with a little bit of insight, particularly if you're new in the space. Hopefully this will help you to, you know, understand things. Now, just remember, you know, when you're in a bear market, it might take more than a couple of weeks or a couple of months to get back in the green. It might literally take you a year or so. But, you know, generally, if you hold long enough and you're in reasonably good project projects, they're going to be in profit. Again, it just might take a while. It definitely took me a while from the heights of 2017 uh, to get back into profit. I think it took me till nearly 2020, very, very close to 2020 anyway. All right, moving on. A couple of interesting stories. So the Bank of America, uh, Bank of America survey, 74% of the people uh, say that Bitcoin uh, is in a bubble. <sighs> Look, it's to some people it will seem like a bubble but if you've been here long enough you'll know it's called a cycle is it going to get to a blow off top point and come back down absolutely that's what it does it's done it time and time again we haven't seen anything to think that'll change but that so-called bubble effect 
is going to get smaller and smaller and it has been for a very very long time the gains aren't quite as big as what they used to be and the losses aren't quite as large as they used to be either excuse me they used to be they are starting to sort of even out don't get me wrong there's still massive upsides and still fairly uh painful downsides but not like they used to be at least the upsides are a lot better these days compared to the downsides how long that will last you know are we going to see a 30 40 percent correction at some stage again i think we will i just get the feeling now that that won't be until we get to at least the hundred thousand dollar mark there's just too much interest in it and with all the people talking about bitcoin going to you know two hundred thousand three hundred thousand five hundred thousand a million dollars yeah who wouldn't want to buy it even up to a hundred thousand it'll be a hard task once it equals once it gets to a hundred thousand for people to want to get into it it's going to take some time and it's going to be more bigger players after that but i have no doubt that it goes on to two hundred fifty thousand to a half a million dollars within the next five to ten years i easily see that happening you know again i have been you know overestimating the downsides and under underestimating the upsides though so again that you know sort of 250 to 500,000 in 5 to 10 years could be very very uh, undervalued again never financial advice though just my personal opinion so let's have a look so the most recent bank of america fund manager survey shows that about 3 out of 4 professional investors think that bitcoin is a bubble uh, again if they don't understand the space then that's what they're going to think but also that could be them throwing fud to keep the prices down so they can uh, buy up uh, their fair share because you know we've seen a number of stories happening where people are saying stuff like that only to find out you know weeks later that they were actually buying bitcoin so i think so, there's some of that in there but i think a lot of these investors just don't understand it and they go by all this media and stuff they haven't actually looked into it and so they say oh yeah that's a bubble and it's going to pop and you know go down no it's a cycle that's what it does that is the cycle and the only difference between uh, the cryptocurrency space and traditional markets is the volatility it, it, the patterns still play out the same they just happen quicker and they're more explosive in cryptocurrencies that is the only difference you know some regulation obviously we're not as regulated as other spaces but that's sort of already coming but that really is the difference you go back and look at the s p 500 chart and the bitcoin chart they are somewhat similar just again bitcoin's doing you know the highs are much higher the lows unfortunately have been much lower but it's all happening uh, in four years it's not taking 10 15 years to play out so the fund managers also rated bitcoin second on the list of the most crowded trades that's you know people want to get in that's the way it works and that you know if something starts to really pop like tesla perfect example i mean when that started to pop off everyone was jumping into it and it's had some uh, rec uh decent retracements but no one's calling it uh the kind of bubble that they are calling it in bitcoin some people are there's definitely people out there saying that you know tesla's in a bit of a bubble at the moment and it's gonna you know pop and come back but that's not a bubble popping that is a market cycle playing out a bubble is literally something that doesn't come back it's just crap it's fugazi it's not real bitcoin's real cryptocurrencies are real tesla's real that is a cycle that is playing out it is not a bubble that's such a horrible term there's definitely things that are there out there that are bubbles and they're just not real and once they pop that's it they'll basically sort of disappear and they'll never come back but there's very few things that are actual bubbles like that it's more a cycle that is playing out and that's what cryptocurrencies of bitcoin are currently doing and will continue to do it's just we're in the upside to the cycle now not the downside so it's easy to be happy and make a lot of money in the upside it's you know how you manage that in the downside that will really make the difference and whether you come out of it really really well or you know have to wait a number of years before you're you know back in profits all right recently investment bank jp morgan also warned that cryptocurrency as a sector is in a bubble again not a bubble it's a cycle it's a cycle that just continues to play out but this is you know i think jp morgan saying that that straight up is fud that is 100 percent fud they want people to think that so they can continue because i can guarantee you they're buying it and they're trying to get it at these cheap prices they're the ones probably buying it at fifty two thousand fifty five thousand dollars they're whenever there's a dip they're scooping it up 
All right, moving on, U.S. lawmakers. All right, so U.S. lawmaker warns Treasury Secretary and Fed Chair not to ignore Bitcoin or America will fall behind. That's the same for all countries. That is literally all countries. If they don't get on top of what's happening with Bitcoin and get behind it and start innovating and all the rest of it, they'll get left behind. They 100% will. So Congressman Kevin McCarthy has urged Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell not to ignore Bitcoin like they have been trying to do. He believes it is the future, emphasising I do not want America to fall behind other countries. Yeah, and look, for Australia, I'd say the same thing to uh, our Prime Minister Scott Morrison. We need to, you know, get on the front foot for this. This is, you know... Blockchain's real, Bitcoin's real, a number of other cryptocurrencies are real, not all of them. Plenty of them will fail and do nothing, but there's a lot of really good stuff happening in this space and every country wants to get in and sort of be a part of that. You don't want to be left behind and, again, be the last one trying to get on board. You want to be one of the first ones. Not always the first because it's scary and if it's a big mistake, everyone laughs at you and you hurt the most, but you know, once you see one or two people getting into it, if it's generally working for them, you don't want to be too far behind him. So he says, I think they tried to ignore it to make it go away. I think Jamie Dimon will tell you that from the beginning he was wrong. And I think, you know, in private conversations he'd say that. Publicly he's probably not going to come out and say uh, that he was wrong. Well, hey, I think he already sort of has. But he's not going to be harping on about it. He doesn't like to be wrong. And he said they should not ignore it. Complete agreement. No country should. Like I said, literally no country. Right, NBA top shots. So just a few weeks after raising funds at a reported uh, $2.6 billion valuation, so Dapper Labs, that's who created it, they were valued at $2.6 billion. They are responsible for the high-flying digital collectibles platform NBA Top Shot. They're now raising more money and they're now being valued at $7.5 billion. I mean, that is, you know, they've tripled nearly, tripled their valuation. NFTs, I mean, they just keep going and going and going. And like I said, I like the platforms of NFTs that they're based on. That's what I'm happy to put money into. The actual NFTs themselves, I mean, look, you know, the NBA, you know, top shot NFTs, they're going to be like cards. That's They're just a digital version of cards. There will be cards that will be worth squillions. So much money, it's not funny. But most of them will be worth nothing. Hence why I'd rather invest in the platforms that they're on than the actual you know, NFTs themselves because I'm just, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I won't buy NFTs, but they would just be for sentimental value, really. They wouldn't because I think, oh, this one's going to 10 million and that one's going to 50 million. No, nah, look, you know, I might get lucky and buy one out of, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 NFTs that actually kind of make some money, but the majority of them will just be for, you know, sentimental value that's literally it but i mean that is amazing 2.6 billion you know to 7.5 billion and just a couple of weeks later that is how fast things are starting to grow here so here record setting liquidations worth 10 billion dollars in the last 24 hours as the entire crypto market plummeted by double digit percentages so i think it was 300 billion uh, the actual whole entire market uh, kind of came down. But a lot of this is, you know, it's people that are leveraging stuff. That's why I don't do it. It's just, look, sometimes it, it can work and I know there's people out there and they do really, really well at it, but they kind of don't tell you about the losses that they have too much. Some do, but most kind of won't. And that's what happens if, you know, you put in the longs every now and then you know early on you might get it right but then one pe- once people start to understand the bull market's really in effect there's, that's when the big manipulation sort of comes uh, and you're just constantly going to lose money even with your stop losses you're still going to lose money if you get if you get liquidated you just won't lose all of it you'll just you know, you'll still lose some and don't get me wrong some you know sometimes you get it right and probably do really well but for me I've never done leverage trading. I don't know if I ever will. Sometimes I think I want to, but yeah, this kind of stuff just puts me off. I just like the idea of investing. Uh, It's so much easier. I don't have to worry about the day-to-day fluctuations. Like yesterday, yeah, I probably would have lost 20, 20, if not maybe even more, 30% uh, total of, you know, what my uh, net worth was. None of it was uh, actual, 
uh, investments, it, it's unrealized gains because I was lucky. I invested, you know, months and months and months ago, like over a, almost a year ago now. Well, actually, it would have been over a year ago is when I put the bulk of it in and I've just kept dollar cost averaging since. So again, that'd have to be something absolutely crazy to happen for me to truly lose money. Now, again, I'm going to lose unrealized gains at times. I know that. And I may completely miss the top of the market and I'll have to suffer through the, the next bear market. But I can guarantee you that bear market's not going down to the prices that I bought at. I'm still likely to be in profit. And what I'll do is once I know we're in a true bear market, the dollar cost averaging stops. I won't be dollar cost averaging in. I'll be waiting for a bottom pattern to form and then I will start to dollar cost average in. And the money that hopefully, you know, I've taken, I know I've already taken some profits. So if I get really lucky and take a lot of profits at the right time, then the bottom of the market next time, that is where I plan to get in nice and early and, you know, build some positions in some good things. And that is where the big money is made. That's the easiest way to make the big money. You have to understand charts and understand cycles and all the rest of it. But if you can get in at the bottom of the bear market and put some money into some good projects and continue to dollar cost average in through the next cycle, if you can get out, you know, sometime around the peak, doesn't have to be exactly, that is where you will make life changing money. Now, I'm not quite at life changing money yet, but I've definitely made money that will change my life. That's, there's no doubt about that. I don't have anywhere near enough, unfortunately, to simply retire and never have to work again. Uh, I, I doubt I'll be able to make that kind of money in this cycle. But if I play it right, the bear market, the bottom of the bear market next time, if I can put in to some good projects uh, and you know have a reasonable amount of money to put in, that's where I think I may be able to make life-changing money. But again, that's, you know, that's all on a wing and a prayer at the moment. It's a bit of a hope and a dream. We have to wait and see. But I've definitely made money that will change my life. I just haven't made that life-changing money. I'm not buying properties. I'm not buying Lambos and I'm not quitting my job. But, you know, fingers crossed one day that's what I can do. All right, moving on. So the crypto industry. So notable tech investor Ron Conway, he was an early Coinbase uh, investor, called the crypto industry the next multi-million dollar opportunity in innovation. Completely agree. On the day when Coinbase's coin shares officially started trading, Conway opinioned, I think that's the yeah, opinion, that the crypto sec sector is quickly growing, but it is just getting started. I completely agree. I think, you know, we're still five or ten years away from, you know, the real you know, where it kind of just levels out and we don't have the massive volatility anymore, at least in Bitcoin, in all these other altcoins, they're always going to have big, uh, big volatility just because of the way they're simply designed. You know, they're all, they're generally a fixed amount. So whether it's 100 million coins, 10 coins, or, you know, 50 billion coins, whatever it is, uh, there's always going to be, yeah, huge volatility uh, in these, uh, altcoin spaces but look this is an early investor and he's made a lot of money uh, in tech in general and now he says crypto is the next big thing now we've got to remember he's saying that because he's already in the space he was an early investor in coinbase and a lot of people sold a lot of coinbase shares the other day and made a lot of money so you know he's a little bit biased when he's saying that but he's he's also probably believes that as well and i've got no doubt he's heavily invested in cryptocurrencies all right, Willy Woo. So he's come out and said he believes that Bitcoin is currently resting at a halfway intermission before it blasts off to potential gains as high as 733%. Now he does say here he has a moving price target starting at $300,000 for Bitcoin this bull cycle. So that's where he thinks the minimum top is. You know, I have no idea where the top is. I think it's going to be somewhere from sort of 150000 onwards. But again, I've already spoke about this. I quite often overestimate the downside and I severely underestimate uh, the upside to things. Because again, I never thought Doge would get to $0.30. Cents, uh, and I laughed at the thought of Doge getting to a dollar. Now, dollar, Doge is like, what is it, $0.20 something cents, uh, $0.32 cents. Geez, it only has to triple from here and it is over a dollar and I think it can easily do that. I mean, you know, Willy Woo saying Bitcoin can get to 300,000 sort of bare minimum. I mean, that's basically a 6x from here. So if Bitcoin were to 6x, I think Dogecoin would probably 12x, 20x, 30x 
that's the reality of it. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but if Bitcoin were to get to 300,000, I think Dogecoin goes over a dollar easy. Well and truly goes over a dollar. That's nothing about the fundamentals of the coin, whether it's really worth that value and, you know, can it do anything else other than just be a meme coin? <laughs> you know, separate story. But I think Dogecoin can easily get to a dollar if Bitcoin goes to 300,000. I think if Bitcoin goes to 300,000, Dogecoin goes to something silly like probably $5. Uh, but again, never financial advice. Please don't rush out and buy Dogecoin. I'm not buying any Dogecoin. So that must tell you something about, you know, my thoughts. I'm not saying that I won't buy some and try and get it on, uh, you know, on a basically flip it and trade it. But I'd have to see Dogecoin have a big correction before I did that. I'm not buying into this. Uh, I've been burnt too many times in the past buying into pumps like this. Now, sometimes they pay off. I've had them pay off for me before, bought into pumps and they just kept going and I got lucky. But most of the time I bought into pumps and then it just dumped and it took me a really long time to uh, get those gains back. But anyway, that's another story. All right, serious crypto washout. So again, we spoke about it and Mike Novogratz put out that tweet saying that he thought there would be a washout. And it was literally 12 hours, 24 hours later, that's what happened. So 300 billion price flash crash. Suddenly tanks Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple uh, and Cardano. Although <laughs> Dogecoin was holding pretty steady and it still is by the looks of it. It's holding pretty steady. So congratulations to the, everyone. Now again, lastly, this is still high, 74. Oh, has me, excuse me, nervous that we could see more downside. But again, I've been too bearish. Uh, and not bullish enough. But look, the market is always going to do something to make me and anybody else look silly. So I'm now saying that I need to be more bullish. It'll probably you know, completely flip to the other side and we'll have some ma massive crash. But fact is, I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the short term. So in the day-to-day -day stuff, I really don't know. But in the long-term stuff, five years, I think Bitcoin's easily $200,000 in five years' time. Like, easily. I don't think that's going to be a problem. The low side in between now and then, oh, I don't know. You know. It'll depend where Bitcoin gets to this cycle. If Bitcoin makes it to three hundred dollars or $400,000 this cycle, I don't think you'll see Bitcoin under $100,000 uh, in the low. I just I don't. But if bitcoin only gets to maybe sort of 150,000 or just over 100,000 at the peak cycle i think we can easily see bitcoin down to around about sort of 30,000 uh, dollars at the bottom of this cycle but that's the thing i just don't know where it's going to go you know, in the sort of short term long term i think easily bitcoin's going to be 200,000 plus uh, in 5 years uh, in 10 years i think bitcoin is a half a million dollars easily now, again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But like I said, I, I, I'm i generally nowhere near bullish enough and I'm generally too bearish. Uh, so take what you want out of that. You make your own decision. All right, this is my question to you today. I want you to put down below, what do you think Bitcoin will be at in five years and 10 years? For me, five years, I think Bitcoin's 200,000 and 10 years, I think Bitcoin's half a million dollars. That's my price target. So, and that's kind of my bare minimum. I, I think it'll easily do those prices. It's not that it can't drop lower in some kind of flash crash or something, but I think the average price of Bitcoin in five years' time is 200000 and I think the average price of Bitcoin in 10 years' time is half a million dollars. I'd like to know your thoughts down below. Let me know. Now, can I also ask one favor? Can you go down and hit that like button? It really helps with the algorithm, and I want my videos to get out there and be seen by other people. I'd like to be a full-time YouTuber someday uh, talking about finances in general, not just cryptocurrencies, but predominantly cryptocurrencies because in the bear market, cryptocurrencies aren't where you want to invest until you get to the bottom, until you find that, you know, where it finally starts to level out and it might have a few little, you know, uh, dips that might go a little bit lower, but it's not just constantly kind of falling off a cliff. The volatility has really stopped and you f see that base formation that is when that's the ultimate opportunity right there once that happens you know you get into the projects that you believe in and you hold throughout that next bam, uh, bull trend and you will make crazy money crazy crazy money 
Uh, but again, I can't offer financial advice. That's my personal opinion. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you know, you're making some of those gains back because it was a pretty brutal sort of 24 hours. And I'll see you next time.